every every topic we just need to throw the cards at the yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to That Range Life, episode 44. You were right off the bat with the cards. <laughs> Man, do we have a show for you today. First off, how about I didn't say day 44, I said episode. Um, nice fin- job. Finally getting a feel. Uh, as usual, do us a big favor. As Chris always points out, it's working, so please just do it. All right? Help us it out. It is working. When, when we're off camera, I have I have statistics for you because I looked into what the 365-day growth has been for the channel. Take that off air, and you guys can just keep guessing. But anyway. Just, yeah. Keep sharing. Keep telling friends. All that good tell stuff. Him, and and subscribe and, and all that good stuff. Subscribe down here. Hit the bell so you get the notification. Give a thumbs up. Hang out with Scoob in the comments. Let us know. Hey, speaking of comments, how about uh, you know, we hear about our, our 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 one of our major fans, Scotty McEwen? Where are the comments? <laughs> Let's get some comments, Scotty. I don't know if Scotty has it. He probably watches like incognito and doesn't even have an account because you know he doesn't like to do that kind of stuff. But well, I'll. All right, I'll let it slide. Scott, yeah. I, we appreciate your support regardless, even if you're family. <laughs> you right. did ask the other day about um, if we were going to go back into lockdown, if we were going to start the podcast up because it's, it was his favorite show. I know you don't like to hear this and it'd be your worst <laughs> nightmare, but I think I could be. I wouldn't do again. I wouldn't do it daily, but I think I right. could be convinced. Right. And then it'd be like, wait, it is a show we're already doing. We're just doing more. And then you're going to be like, I don't have time for this. 15 minutes down to four. <laughs> 60. 60. Oh, my mistake. Four. Yeah, my mistake. I didn't mean to disrespect you that way. Um, all right. So anyway, like, subscribe. Please help us out. Follow uh, you know, follow Chris's YouTube channel. Follow us at Range Heroes. Chris over at, at Chris McEwen, pretty much everywhere. Just do it. We got some housekeeping to get out of the way before we get into the show here. Um two things. Most of you, if you're a big golf person and do the whole social media thing, are familiar with the hit, what, it's been about a year, give or take, hit sensation on Twitter, Monday Q Info, our good friend, Ryan French. Awesome, yeah, awesome account, awesome story, uh, previous guest on Golf Origin Stories, in fact. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I think it's at, what is it, at a case of the golf? Or no, at a case. What is it? Oh, the Monday, right? Oh, no, no it is not. at it is at a case of the golf one or something like that. Yeah. Either way, if you right. search Monday Q info Twitter, he will come up. Anyway, right. Ryan. All jokes aside, Ryan lives like, I mean, three golf holes away from me in a, a town over. Like, I mean, very very close. So uh, Ryan is currently he posted something on Twitter. Uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago saying uh, some he's done a lot of charity uh, money raising products, product raising for um, needy high school golf teams that don't have equipment and they need. I mean, I'm talking like golf balls, golf. Yeah, literally, like they'll take the 20 year old. Yeah, 20 right. year old golf balls just so the kids can go yeah. play yep. uh, tees, gloves, you name it. So basically yeah. everything. And um yeah, and it's I it, it know it probably sounds like a sob story, but it's all true stuff. He had um I can't remember if it was a mom or dad, but somebody reached out to him and uh I want to say the kid was like a it was a cancer survivor, and that sunk a lot of their funds as it often does. And then I want to say the dad got laid off because of COVID or something. They're like, Look, we don't need much, we don't want anything, but if there's anything you you know. Anything you can do, we just want to give our kids obsessed with golf. We just want to give them a good Christmas. And he's like, I'm on it. And, you know, he got, I know we got our guys at sub 70 to donate some clubs. Uh, you know, he's saying like for companies who reached out to us, but, you know, we still aren't getting everything. I opened a GoFundMe. People are donating to that. Um, so I said, well, the club graveyard, bro. Uh, what do you yeah. need? Uh, let me go. Let me go hunt through the garage. I, I dug up a whole bunch of stuff like brand new shoes, you know, and this is like this is little kids, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and mm-hmm. high school kids and playing high school golf, whatever. So, yeah, um, 
I dug up a bunch of stuff that I'm going to throw his way, um, reached out to a few people who are going to, who are supposed to be sending some stuff. We'll see how that goes. But, um, I would encourage everybody to go over to Ryan's Twitter, Monday Q info, check out what he's doing and, uh, donate. He's accepting gear. I mean, we don't want to give these kids like all used, used beat stuff. Right. So, but if you have that new bag you never got around to using some shoot whatever right yeah yeah and yeah. I mean, we'll put a link to his account in the show notes so good call you can go in there do yeah. it donate and then if you want just donate money i, I got I got roped into this and it's gonna be a real you know i'm gonna be this is this is asking a lot of me uh we're gonna meet up meet up i, th- I think we're gonna meet up him and me socially distant and safe of course because guys covid um I'll just say this side note at a very close friend of the golf business. I won't name names uh, from one of the companies that I've gotten to know real well over the years, hit me up and uh, turns out had a horrible case of COVID and really? uh, is just back. So if he watches my best, my guy, glad he's back out. Glad he's doing well. Um, so yeah, take your COVID serious. Sorry if I got too political there. Um, <laughs> anyway, so Ryan and I are going to go hit up. We have a Golf Galaxy PJ. So we got all that stuff around here. We're going to go take the donated money to buy this stuff on the list that, you know, we didn't awesome. donated, whatever. And sometime in the first week of December here, get it shipped out to everybody and, uh, you know, give some kids a good Christmas. So check it out. Donate. Let us know. I'll get Chris to send you some buttons, <laughs> some pins. Sure. That's what I do. I just send me send me evidence of a uh, of a donation of any kind, and we'll get you some that range life swag. And this is what I do. I just make Chris take care of all that stuff because he's a responsible adult. <laughs> um, I'm into it, man. It's, it's, whatever, I'll do my part. I'm a sucker for a good uh, fundraiser or charity. So no, dude, you better donate, and you better say Bill demanded it. Do it. I got some stuff I could give it away. Or you go fund me, whatever, whatever you want to do. Oh yeah. Or the go, go fund me. Perfect segue. We would be able to, we're going to be able to exchange stuff. So you will have pins to send out or gear. I can get to Ryan for the donation because ladies and gentlemen, the match is set. The <laughs> match has been set. The tour edge hot launch 521 series match between Chris and myself has been set as you're watching this. For this Saturday at one of Tour Edge's home courses where they have their their company outings and whatnot. St. Andrews in West Chicago. Chris versus me. Hot That's Lunch right. 521 Extreme Series versus Hot Lunch 521 C Series. Compet- I can't wait to hit my my E club again. Can't I wait. I'm gonna tell you, we had our we had our range day testing the new stuff, you and I. Yeah. Um I am at a point. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't want that stock driver shaft in there just because it's not a good <laughs> fit for me. It's a good shaft. It's just not for me. But right. I'm going, you know, after hitting that thing, I, w- I might I might game that E-Series driver, at least have one on standby for when shit hits the fan driver. <laughs> and go to that. Dude, man, I still, I mean, I still laugh at how, uh, easy those things are to hit when I think about them. They're just so easy to hit, and neither one of us could hit a fade. It's could not hit a fade. The equipment. I I, I feel like it was a go. You always say you're like I I don't know what no the no no you should have been there. It, no, I just, <laughs> this is this is no this is not a like not a bit man. Like we were both legit. Like you legitimate were trying to hit fades. Yeah, and you couldn't do it. Like the ball would draw every single time. It was crazy. I just remember hitting the wedges and just announcing to nobody on the driver ridge, eighty nine dollars a club, eighty nine dollars a club. <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. coming up. Anyways, Saturday. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I'm very excited about that. Uh, Who that's, knows that's when it'll be, be up to watch? But it's. Coming. I'll try to get it flipped as as quickly as possible. But uh, it will I'm be not. on video, and we will get it up on the on the channel, and um, and maybe we'll even build in like. Uh, I'm trying, I'm kind of getting over my skis a little bit, uh, but maybe we can integrate it into this show and do just some highlights, a few little play by play. I will tell you, I'm a little nervous. I think I sent a picture, but I'm going into it with a fairly notable injury there. If you could, yeah, 
Yeah, I saw that. We can tell. We can. It cracked. You can see it cracked on the bottom last night. And I was like, oh god, no. Anyway, we'll talk about that in an upcoming segment here. Um, I won't give you the segments. We'll just get into it. Let's go to gear talk. All right. All right. Here's gear talk today. This is the one you've all been waiting for. This is a big one. This is a big one. We will not have. We will not have a more exciting piece of equipment to talk about in Gear Talk this year. You guys go going. It's probably True Links, where it's probably Tour Edge, probably <laughs> Sub Seventy. It's probably VA shafts again. Nope, it's none of them. All those guys pale in comparison to what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> the Costco Kirkland Signature Wedge Set. The Costco. So it comes. Wedge. It does come as a set. You get three wedges straight up in a box. So that, that that's how that works. You the, don't get to buy them one one on one, one like one at a time. You show up to Costco, or you go to Costco. Costco. <laughs> dot com. Right. And you search in store. You do this too. You go. You search by yelling, at, and it'll <laughs> just come back to like echolocation. You search for Costco, or no, Kirkland Signature Wedges, okay? Okay. You will find the box of three wedges. Now, I'm a little confused on pricing. I want to say I paid after shipping and tax, like $189. I think if you buy them in store, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just call it an even 180, three wedges, Okay. Right. That's 60 bucks a pop. It's true. Let's call them 65 each after tax ship. So I've been calling them a $65 wedge. Okay. The packaging is brilliant, but you know, it's, if you are somebody and I think they survived this a little bit with that putter, but with the wedges, you're like, there's three wedges with like an open front. So you can see the three wedge heads. Stuck in Clever. foam. Yeah, like it looks very like, you know, box set at Target-esque. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Your, you know, it's, n- <sighs> it's it's not there. Um, can you touch the wedge? Can you actually touch the wedge? Through no, the they have plastic. You they, can, they but they the have plastic cellophane? wrapped on it. Yeah. Okay. The plastic wrap. And it's three wedges, I said. 52 degree gap wedge. 56 okay. degree sand wedge. 60 degree lob wedge. Now. Okay. Here's my favorite part. You're just assuming those are everybody's lofts and everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's what I need. And, you know, I guess you have to I guess you have to pick universal lofts. So, yeah, I says mean, my favorite part, like it doesn't make sense. But I guess what, yeah. what, what are you going to do? Be like, you know what? No, we really need like 50, 54, 58. Right. I mean, if you if you were to pull uh, 100 golfers. Do you think. 75% have that loft combination in their bag. Here's the thing. More than half. More than half. Dude. I don't think so. I don't. Do you I think, think people are playing 58s? No. I think people either aren't playing a lob wedge, don't have three wedges. Well, that's different. But no, but, All right, so no, but no bag, this is where I bag of wedges. No, I disagree with you. Here's why. Because it's easy as guys who do quote unquote golf media who read the forums who are involved in golf twitter to be like no, all golfers that's like one percent of golfers that's one percent right. of golfers so when i stop and think who's buying a costco wedge sure the golf wrx thread where people are like oh the costco wedge is here are buying it but that's even less than that one percent or four you know, percent right. whatever i mean right. this is somebody who's going in and buying like their kirkland jeans their kirkland wine their you know Kirkland right. casket for great great grandma. Like they just go, oh, I don't have, I have an old sand wedge. Oh, there's other types of sand wedges because that's how they think. You know, they aren't they aren't looking at it like, whoa, what what's my loft setup? They just go. Exactly. Well, that's my point. That's my point. And they're so that's my point. not a discerning golfer, right? So that's I'm my, like, I mean, that's my point. And most golfers aren't. The majority of golfers out there are not. Right. Us. So that guy <laughs> could that that person. I said, he sees three. He he sees three wedges for one hundred and sixty bucks, and he's like, "Done." Right. And I'm he, in. There are three different sand wedges, or or it could seem like I don't know the difference because they they think I have a pitching wedge, and then I know you need a sand wedge for the bunker, and they just bought one that said S. It could be anywhere from fifty right. to 
you know, right. 68 degrees. Uh, right. You know, they just right. don't know the difference. So I could even see them be like, you know, I'm, I don't need three. I only need one. So I, I think you do run into a lot more than you, myself, in uh, AUF get on a text and make fun of, you know. So, all right, I can see that. But here's what I love. The Kirkland Signature Milled Face Wedge. That's fun. We post, I posted them on Instagram, as you recall, when they came in. Yep. And the amount of people who sent me texts literally saying, Milled Wedges My Ass. And I'm like, whoa, Costco never (laughs) claimed this was a milled wedge. Right. The face is milled. Right. So it's not a milled wedge. This isn't going to feel like a Vokey. This isn't going to feel like a Mira Tour wedge. What do you mean? How? But they're $60. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And so, and this is what I'm really looking forward to after the fact. And And I say this in the review, skipping ahead a little bit of my notes. Uh, I'll come back to these crucial things to cover about it. Um, someone going, yeah, but 60, it's 60, 65 dollars a wedge. Otherwise, like, you know, that's a lot cheaper than 150 dollars for a Vokey or the, the tour edge, you know, wedge sure. that you and I have been touting. Uh, right. never mind a mirror wedge. And it's like, the, this wedge, sure, fine, but this wedge doesn't compare to any of those feel wise in of quality. Course, right. So, like, if you right. are a real golfer who right. plays better equipment, you are going to tell the difference between the sixty-five dollar wedge and the hundred and twenty dollar plus wedge. You are. I can't believe you have to say that out loud. You do. Though. How is that not a given? How is that not just a given? Because you'll see the Come golf on, people. W, you'll see the golf WX form with some guys. I like, know. I this know. Costco putter feels just as good as my Scotty Cameron uh, Circle T that was Tiger's backup, right. and I paid twelve thousand dollars for in nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> right? They're like, no, it doesn't. So, right. and if uh, it does to you, good for you, man. Play game it then. Fine. So this is what the golf nerds are—the ones that are like really to me. To me specifically, as somebody, and maybe you, because we'll all get like all worked up about this opinion people have. Like they aren't that great. If you're, and so I say the people who this is good for this wedge. Are you the Kirkland? You know how people are like Kirkland collectors. They just mm-hmm. love buying like Kirkland branded stuff. I don't know if it's because they love it. If it's the bit, I don't know the reasoning, but they do. Hey, if you're one of those people, you got the you got the putter, you got the golf balls, you want the wedges, do it. They're fine. They're fine. They like so going back, like they're actually perfectly fine. Frankly, I was even surprised. It's like, well, they don't feel great, they don't feel bad, they're serviceable, right. and right. they have like they have super thick soles. I sent you, I sent you a picture to put in here mm-hmm. of all three soles. They're very thick. I couldn't ever really come around on the 52, but it is what it is. Um, they don't have any like fan, it's a very flat with a you know, some bevel soul grind and some can- and, yeah, little camber but it's made for like a square face with a big thick low center of gravity to get under the like just bring the club under the ball pop it right. in the air right. that's what it's designed to do i don't know we talked about callaway's cavity back wedge recently and i said the same thing if you're a, a crafty diverse wedge player probably not the wedge you, for you it's for the person who just wants to hit a basic Wedge straight shot. up pop the ball right. of wedge shot these right. can do that too even like more i want to say more forgiving but they're for, they're thicker and more just like just square the face up straight at the ball and through and they mm-hmm. do that fine they do it very fine so if you're somebody who's like i got my grandpa's old golf clubs i'm walking through costco you know what i could use three new wedges they're fine mm-hmm. you know your neighbor's like hey i went to costco and i was like i, I got an old sand wedge and i said this seemed like a great deal and i I know like you've joked about their golf stuff, so I picked them up. Okay, good. Now, if like you right. or J-Riv come to me and said you got them and you're going to bag them, I'd be like, <sighs> I know I joke around to me, you, you're idiots for bagging this, but what are you doing? And I, and I, I genuinely yeah. mean that. Like, why? Why? Any of my golf nerd friends, none of you need that kind of wedge. Well, no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we may need it, uh, but we're not going to buy it. But here's what I would say to you, Chris, and I say this in the review. Do you know what I would do if I'm spending $65 on a basic forgiving wedge? Very timely here. 
I'm just going to save an extra $15, mow an extra lawn, whatever it is I got to do. Cause that's, I used to get paid 15 bucks to mow my grandma's lawn as a kid. And I'd always be like, I need $15 for this. All right. Next Sunday, I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> mow grandma's lawn. That is a joke. And save your $15. Go buy the Tour Edge Hot Launch 521 or E521 wedge. It's a straightforward wedge. It's made to go back, go forward, and pop the ball up. It's So that's one wedge. I'm sorry, twenty five dollars. It's eighty nine. It's seventy five dollars if you're going to have me buy all three. It's going to take way longer to save seventy five dollars. Fair, but I guess what I'm saying is, I get, I know what you're saying. I'm just being a jerk about it. It is wildly better equipment that is going to last you longer. Right. For I mean, fifteen dollars more a wedge. Right. And yeah. yes, I, I think get it. It's kind of interesting. I think. Um, you know, when, when Costco came out with that, with that first golf ball and it was like, just kind of took the golf world by storm and they were high quality, low cost, you know, equivalent, basically near equivalent to, you know, your Titleist golf balls and things like that. It kind of set this unattainable bar for Kirkland stuff. And they couldn't even do it when they tried to bring that golf ball back. They never could make it as good. Again. Right. Right. And, and now they're now, like, like, it's just, it's just. Kirkland stuff. It's, it's off. It's, it's knockoff equipment, man. Like, you, you know, you're going to get what you pay for here. Like, no, it's not terrible. Like Kirkland's okay stuff across the board. Great. Like, great alcohol. No, it, great alcohol, by the way. <laughs> right. And great. I meat. bought their bourbon. Yeah. It's good. Not ashamed of it. Yeah. For they, have, sure. they have this one rum. That's fantastic. And then they're known. But that's, for like great I mean, that's meat. what it is. I mean, right. it's just like an okay thing for the cost. It's a value buy and it's fine. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you are a golf nerd like us who goes to YouTube to learn about golf things. <laughs> right. There probably will be a few people who is like, who are like, oh, I've heard about that and I'm going to Google it. But the reality is, which to that person, get it. If you're a golf nerd that wants to get in a conversation yeah. with me about C grinds and M grinds and T grinds. Oh, yeah. Don't do this. Stop no, no, it. No. Just stop. Don't it. Do it. Don't try to tell yeah. me otherwise about how great this thing is. Um, yeah, no. That said, it's they're fine to me it's a it, it is a little gimmicky um they they were better they were better than i expected i will give you that you know they're not gonna like spin the ball a ton but they're right. not gonna not spin the ball but like I, I say like if you're good at spinning your wedge you, you'll be able to spin them it's fine but like if you're good at spinning your wedge you're probably not buying this wedge <laughs> right like I'm, oh, I'm a, yeah. I'm an okay golfer, and I'm okay with my wedges, and I'm not good at spinning it. So like, I'm not right. buying the Costco wedge to make me spin it better. Right. It's not going to grab the ball. Right. Necessarily. One last note. Interestingly, they have a, it's a true temper wedge shaft, and you can't find really much detail other than this interview with some hot shot at Costco. There's basically like a handful of executives who are big golf guys, and they realize they're Costco and have pull. So they're yeah. in the golf industry now as like their hobby. And now shit, it's making money. Um, right. Right. <laughs> so they have true temper made a shaft for them. And I can't, there's not, I can't really find any details other than on the, like on the page themselves. They say true temper wedge shaft for Kirkland, <laughs> not on true temper site on Costco site. So I don't yeah. know, like I say in my review, the, the shaft's going to be fine. Um, it, True Temper's done this for a while. They know what they're doing, and even I'm sure, yeah. like the budget number they had to hit to make these affordable for Costco it makes sense. It's fine. Shaft's fine. Um, it is a little off-putting though when you look at the grip in your hands and there's a Kirkland logo on it. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Whatever, dude. You're playing with Kirkland golf gloves. You're like completing the set. Like, can we just get some of those like Golf Pride 360 <laughs> grips that don't have any logos on them? But yeah, very much, very much a Costco wedge. Um, if you're a real golf guy, knock it off with the gimmick. You know, I know you're a golf nerd and you can find a better and fitting. Cleveland has one. Callaway has one. Tour yeah. has all of them have that forgiving, uh, you know, up and down pop up wedge. You don't need the Kirkland one. Knock it off. If you're a Kirkland collector, you're picking up, uh, you know, a, a prime full pack or bis uh, brisket. Um, some Knob Creek and some <laughs> Kirkland brand rum and the like supposedly Grey Goose Kirkland vodka. And then you see these wedges on them. Go ahead. 
by all means, enjoy it. Have a good time. It, it, if I saw you break them out on the course, I would have, uh, I would make a fun comment and I'd be like, all right, I'm into it. it let's go. Right. But that's what we're doing. All right. That's gear talk. Chris, we teased it last week, but I, I got to tell you, it's a little less exciting to me now, albeit there's more story. Um, right before we got on the show last week, to re- got yeah. on to record, um, I told you I just won an eBay auction I was very excited about. I can't believe you're still buying stuff on eBay. What do you mean? You've got so much stuff, man. I just got rid of a ton of it, as you Dude, know, and that, I'm not going to talk about the <laughs> Ryan Q true. info. But it's like, it's a gem and, you know, I had plans for it. Now, it's caused me some grief, which we talked about earlier. Right. Uh, right. We'll get into it. Anyway, so arguably, one of the best forged muscle back irons ever made was the early 70s, 72, 73. I think they made them 72, 75 in that window. Ben Hogan Apex muscle back blade yeah. irons. We've mm-hmm. talked about it on this show before because I already mm-hmm. have a set, which I love to death. Um, I bought a one iron, two iron, three iron. I think three iron. Either way, to go with that set, that's my one set. Nice classic Hogan Apex 4, which is their stiff number shaft in those. Okay. So I look around, and I mean, sometimes they go for $300 because they're in such good shape. Sometimes they're like... You've made fun of me before. I'm watching a set and it's like, oh, I just couldn't do it at 65 and it went for right. 67. You know, right. Um, right. But it's like, you know, I always keep my eyes peeled for sets of them for whatever reason, because they, they're they're great iron. They're beautiful. I love everything about them. Well. I, I probably should have predicted this to be the outcome. When I when this all came together, but I found a set of four through p- pitching wedge or in Ben Ho- Ben Hogan world equalizer. That's what they call the pitching right. wedge mm-hmm. uh, four through pitching wedge. Really good shape. I'll just say the right one because there's like different variations of this club, the right one. So it means it's in the right year of ladies Hogan apex heads from 72, 73, whatever. Okay. And I'm like, let me think this through. They weren't make like they weren't making a zillion of these all over the world and being like, well, we have our ladies head. In this case, like our ladies head, our men's head, whatever. I don't think I might be wrong, but for the right. So price, you're saying there's no difference between the heads. It was of the, the club it between was men the and shaft. They put okay. a they had a ladies flex. They had the original shaft, ladies flex, women's grip. So they were small. You know, thin, lightweight grips. I mean, they were yeah. tiny. They like looked like kids' grips when I got them. But I won the auction. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get these. I'm going to take the lady shaft out and just put in a set. I, the golf club graveyard. I got tons of shaft sets. I'm going to put yeah, a, yeah. put something in. I Boom. Perfect set for $40. Then I, as they're in transit, I'm thinking, wait a minute. I might be wrong. They might be a lighter head for swing weight purposes to make a lighter swing weight. And it's not just the shaft. I'm like, whew, I don't know what I signed myself up for. Then these older shafts oftentimes would be smaller, especially for women, like smaller diameters oh. than a men's shaft. Oh, yeah. Like, Shit. I might not have anything that'll fit in that. I might be screwed. I'm going to flip the, albeit a small one, because I didn't pay. I paid $40 shipped for these things. Yeah. I'm going to take a loss flipping them on the old, uh, the old, the old man <laughs> persimmon group on Facebook. Right. So I get them and I go, Hey guys, there's something worth pointing out here. I go, guys, uh, I've never done it before, but, uh, I want to pull a shaft, the shaft from these and reshaft them. How do you pull out? See that hole there? Is oh yeah. Ozzle. Yeah. Both sides. Right. I go, how do you get that out? Cause they pin that all the way through the, the hot into the through the shaft, yeah. Because the epoxy back in those days was terrible. Side note: It's sort of interesting. Like epoxy wasn't really that a thing good for golf clubs, yeah. right? Really until like the late nineties. I think others might tell you different, but late nineties, two thousands. Um, huh. 
And some of these clubs, like not these ones specifically, but the old brands, everybody was doing this. If they if they pinned them, they didn't even use glue. They're like they're just pinned in there. And I think they said Spalding. Wow. It was Spalding. They literally screwed on to the end of the shaft, just wow. screwed in there. Anyway, so they're like, yeah, all you do, heat it up, right on that pin, and you take like, oh, it's a head wobble. I'm like, was someone knocking on my door? Um, <laughs> you take like a one of those. Um, a nail drift, if you will, or a hammer punch, depending on what you want to call it. Sure. Heat it up. You get the thing like on in a vice and you got to hold it steady with pressure and just pound it out. Just blast wow. it through. Oh, OK, cool. I, I'm handy. I, I do this kind of stuff. I, I can handle that. Dude, it was a nightmare. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe if I got different in the future, I have different things I'm going to try. But like, it took me. You can't just take a needle nose and just heat it up and yank. Once you like get it out a little bit. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. And some people say you can. I tried that. No, it didn't work. Huh? wasn't working. Just huh. horrible. And uh, so I'd like heat it up more. And I'm just I'm getting basically as hot as you can before the chrome starts like changing colors and bubbling right. and all that crap. Right. Um, right. You know, hit my they say use like a small hammer. I'm going to point like screw it. I'm using a sledgehammer on the thing. Um, I didn't do any damage to the clubs, thankfully, but finally got them out after I would say start to finish. If I sat down, said pull a shaft, clean everything up and install new ones is maybe worst case scenario, uninterrupted an hour and a half project probably wow. took me f throughout the day, four hours total to get these pins out. I know wow. that's ridiculous on my that's part. That's brutal. Yeah, I'll learn. I'll get better. Uh, but it was what it was. And then thankfully all of them fit a 355 taper shaft. So I had plenty of shafts to use nice. in it. And I just started building up today. Um, but when I was doing this, you know, I keep getting them scorching hot. I was trying to like grab the club head and I had, had like a cover something to like, you know, protect my hand and it slipped. And I just, I mean, just like branded it. Oh yeah. That's what your blister is from. And like a full press on it. thing. It wasn't even just like a oh. tap. Just I got it there right, you know, like with gravity. I'm like, oh, God, I'm yeah. just jumping around my garage, burnt the living daylights out of it. And then like last night, it finally like cracked open and it was disgusting. But I'm pretty pumped about it. They'll be they'll be done here. This one, all the rest of them are drying. This one, I realized after I started trying to put the shaft in, um, I think there's bits of the of the pin uh, down there. So I couldn't finish building it, but close. Right. I mean, that's my big eBay purchase. That's pretty we need to make sure that we play our our uh, vintage stuff next year. Yeah, I was thinking like because we never did that this year. We're really good at this. We 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 do the things we say. <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, Saturday we should play our vintage clubs. I'm like, we're never going to do the tour edge round. All right, vintage clubs. No, we got to do the tour edge for sure. Got to do it. But next year we'll kick. Maybe we'll kick off the season with some vintage stuff. Because like, we'll both be bad anyway. So I like where your head's at. All yeah. right, so that's my eBay purchase. Did the card throw just for you? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm nothing else to do this Thanksgiving. I'll probably be out in the garage tinkering with them, you know, checking lost and lines, new grips, taking it way too serious. Um, I feel like I'm about with the holiday season in COVID. I'm about to have a lot of time on my hands. Yeah, it's starting to feel that way. I'm <laughs> starting to feel that way. I'm like, look, it's true. I'm just walking around looking for glove golf clubs I can take apart, put back together. And then like <laughs> what Nintendo 64 games have I not played enough of yet? And I guess from that point, like, well, I won't be working for four days straight. Maybe I can uh, smoke a ton of meat for four people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good transition. You want me to talk about my new video game that I got while I was uh, yes in, in quarantine? Is this in quarantine? We're going to save it, but I can... Uh... I can talk about it now. Is this quarantine with uh, young Robert? With Roberto. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear about uh, it. Yeah. So we bought, we bought, well, first we had the, um, we had golf club 2019, I think it's called. Okay. So we, we, we grabbed that. Uh, we were playing that a little bit and it was fine. Um, it's not, um, they had maybe I think two or three courses that were actually like PGA courses that you could recognize and play. Um, but there's a career version. And of course, like I love a good uh, career type of video game, like sports game, mm, I don't know how you mm -hmm. are, but like, I love, you know, playing franchise and Madden. I love that kind of stuff. Like I love that, that <coughs> style of game. Anyways, 
so we played that a little while. Uh, pretty, pretty easy once you get the rhythm down of your swing. I mean, it's based on tempo and things like that, and it was fine. There was still one like weird, like they didn't, you couldn't do anything about the spin of your golf one necessarily. You could change the loft, which would affect your rollout. But it wasn't like really where you're hammering the in, R button on PlayStation yeah, 2 back in the totally, day. Totally, right? totally. Yeah, you couldn't do that. So there was no like spinning a ball back or anything, you know, it was just like, it would just hop and stop was the best you could do, which was fine. You could figure it out. But anyways, so we played that for a while. And then I think like a few days into our um, hangout, into our quarantine, uh, PGA Tour 2K21 went on sale, like 50% off. Mm. And I was like, swoop that, buy that right now. So we bought it, like it gave us a little pop-up, like, hey, this is on sale. And I'm like, oh, 30 bucks, done. Can you play it on on a computer? You can, I think you can, yeah. I wish somebody would have told me it was only $30, so I could have bought it. Yeah, it's, so uh, it's, it's it's way easier. Um, well, at least we played it on like pro setting. We didn't go to the next like all pro or whatever. Um, but they the biggest the biggest difference is they did sort of fine tune your ability to draw and fade and not necessarily spin still, but you can uh, manipulate the loft to where it it kind of acts like you put a lot of spin on it. So you can kind of. You back you can back it up a little bit, but not like you know Phil Nicholson suck back you know sort of. Spin. Do you think that was their response to all the years of people being like, yeah, I shot a fifty two on this course because it's too easy? Well, here's the thing though, because the first tournament I played in, uh, I won it because here's what they do that's totally different from 2019, at least in the in the level that I played at the pro level. You can hold down the A button and it will give you the line of your putt. Oh, that's old school. That's like 2000. Yeah. Tiger Woods 2005. Yeah. So then you can just like adjust, right? And yeah. you don't have to worry about the line. You just worry about your speed. And, and even it even helps with that. So like, you know, I shot whatever it was, 10 under my first tournament that I played and won it. And um, when we left quarantine, I was way ahead in FedEx Cup points, like way ahead, like a thousand points. I think mm-hmm. I won three tournaments. I was dominating the PGA Tour basically as a rookie. I was like, you know, the story. You were Anthony Kim. Basically, right? it's true. That's right. Yeah, I was a five seven bearded old guy just they, running the tour. I think Anthony Kim is a little taller than you. He was a little taller than me. But anyways, <laughs> um, now the cool thing, the thing I liked about the difference, really the difference between the 2019 version and the 21 version, and it's a stupid thing, but you're playing against the pros. Like, in 2019, they have made up names, but in 2021, right. you're playing against like DeChambeau and and Furyk and Justin Thomas and those kind of things. And for whatever reason, it's like, oh yeah, look at here comes Justin Thomas. And they did a really good job of doing like it got old after a while, and I turned it off because you can turn it off. But they do like almost like it's a broadcast. Like earlier, here was Justin Thomas out of the sand. And he hits it to like two inches, right? Yeah. Or here is Tony Fee now from the fairway, and he hits it within a foot. Um, but it did like after a while, you're like, just let me play my round of golf because you can play a round of golf. Here's the other nice thing: um, you can play a round of golf in like 15 minutes. Yeah. Like, right, once you get the right. hang of it, you just cruise. You're just like hitting shots, hitting putts, and like. That's I do it. remember so, that in the old Tiger Woods games. I mean, I'm talking back when I was in college, and you hit your shot. It's still in the air, and you're like. I know it's good. I, I don't need to see it. You're like, just, <laughs> right. you could just hit the button. It wouldn't even show the shot. It just shows where it finishes. And yeah, every now yeah. and then you'd be like, the hell? How am I on the <laughs> other side of the trees? <laughs> right. In this case, you hit like the Y button and it just fast forwards it. Right. So you hit, you hit your drive and you see that it's perfect, perfect. And you're like, all right, why? You watch it roll out. Um, but yeah, and then they have like little mini challenges so you can like get a sponsor. And in order to get a, and the other thing too is like, they integrated real, which is brilliant, brilliant. I could al- already feel myself sort of um, moving towards certain brands, but they do brands. They have Ben Hogan, they have Callaway. Um, Titleist was missing, which was interesting. Um, but they have like all the different brands that you can like sponsor with. Yeah. Um, did you Melbon? Not, did Melbon you not, is a sponsor that you could even. Did you, you not can, play all those games in the like early mid two thousands? No, I didn't. Okay, yeah, because same thing. I played. It's just, it was the same. Well, idea. and as you're talking about, I'm thinking of the clubs I would get, and you're like, you're looking at 
before Odyssey was owned by Callaway. So Callaway had, I forgot what it's, this blue putter. That's a like very famous historic. It's a big deal putter. It's probably okay. like one of the first premium putters, not named Scotty Cameron, right? To rival Scotty Cameron at the time. It was like, that. it was like the answer. It was that kind of shape, but it was like, yeah, yeah, it was okay. this blue. Just look up when we're done, like Callaway blue putter 2000. Cause okay. that's where I want us from. And you could like get that putter, you know, horrible early night. It was very Nike heavy because they're Tiger Woods games. Right. Horrible right. Nike clubs, Nike slingshots. And you're just like, <laughs> yeah. or you could get like, you know, Callaway, Big Bertha Iron. So you're buying stuff just because you're like, well, I just, even in this video game, I'm too ashamed to play whatever. So fine. I'll right. play like, yes, I'll be. It's fun though, man. It's cool. Like, getting yeah. like your Adidas, uh, your Adidas sponsorship. Like I, I was decked out in all Adidas hat, shirt, pants, shoes. I remember Don't. that was it 2012 was the first year they, I think it was, maybe it wasn't, but it was a, like the Augusta one. And that was the first time I'd mm. bought the game in years. Cause I was excited about that. And it was a wild thing where it's, it, I guess it's sort of like the coaching carousel in the Madden games or college football, right? You, you win two tournaments and all of a sudden a screen pops up and it's like Taylor made would like to offer you a sponsorship. Right. Accept or decline. Right. right. But in this case, you had to do certain things to get your sponsorship. So you'd have to finish a top 10, mm -hmm. drive, hit 16 fairways, um, and, you know, have uh, a 30 foot, um, you know, uh, like closest to the pin kind of uh, proximity. Average. Proximity, right. So you had to do those certain things, which would kind of up. So even though I was dominating these tournaments, you know, you still had these little mini challenges you were trying right. to accomplish. So it's, it's, it was a ton of fun. We, we loved it, man. It's super cool. I wish they and did. Like you also have to plan like your sponsor obligations. So it like cuts right. to you <laughs> right. and, you know, like Key Largo doing a photo shoot for whatever brand it is, or, you know, you're right. down on like, uh, you know, you're down on, a beach in Malibu with Melbourne, you know, right. <laughs> right. We sick. Or you had to, when you do like the, uh, the Chinese, like the China, uh, tour, you know, and you had to do the stuff like with the oh, drums, the yeah. like the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow you're like, someone's like, Hey, I'm a local golf blogger and YouTuber. Uh, we'd like to offer you a sponsorship. You right. put it that range life logo right on your bag. How do we get in this right. video game? Uh, yeah, but it's a lot of fun. And that was before I even like, I only played one court. So someone did make a, uh, an Augusta cause you can make your own court. You can design your own courses. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I saw that. Go, that looked cool. It's super cool. Yeah. Super cool. And that was, I didn't even play with like, you know, you and I could play each other, mm -hmm. you know, like remotely or whatever. And I didn't even do any of that. Well, that, that would be a blast. Well, if we got like three or four of us playing, if you told me time. it was $30 when you got it and said, Hey, by the way, I saw this. You might be interested. I would have, but you don't have, it's not cross platform. I don't oh. believe. I don't think so. Yeah. So Damn it. you're going to have to buy a PS five. Cause I think I'm going to buy one. I'm not going to buy one. I, cause this is what I've like my whole life. That's what it'd be like. I need PS three. And I'm like into it for, you know, a quick run through whatever the current Tony Hawk pro skater was at the time right. or whatever right. Mortal Kombat game was current or, you know, and then I'm like, all right, I'm good. And it's, it becomes a expensive Blu-ray and Netflix player. Right, right, right. Fair enough. So you're going to be playing that over the Thanksgiving break. That's the plan. Yes. Are you? I got to go win the FedEx Cup. Yeah. <laughs> good luck, man. Let me know if you need me to carry the bag for you. I'll wear a mask. <laughs> well, I guess I'd have to go. Uh, I can't. I have to get, I need my, right, don't have to quarantine and then start getting tested to follow their protocol. I don't know. That's right. I'll figure That's out right. whatever I got to do. Um. Last thing, I'm smoking a turkey and making an Alabama white barbecue sauce to go over it when I'm done. And it's either going to be terrible or <laughs> what is it, what's in an Alabama white barbecue sauce? It sounds, it sounds slightly racist. It's because it's actually white. It's <laughs> like it's got mayonnaise in it. Um, OK. Garlic, cayenne or chili powder Ooh. i and that's all i remember it's it's on my phone somewhere but either that way it's pretty nice it's more like a chipotle <laughs> almost like a chipotle mayo sort of i think thing. and a lot of people use the leftovers for a coleslaw yeah and i don't like coleslaw so my wife can have it coleslaw is so it's gross. gross so it's disgusting. disgusting especially when it gets all watery and you're like Ugh, it's the worst i've had it 
had like a, here's a bunch of leftover stuff we're gonna put into a cup we're gonna call it something that doesn't make it a food sometimes guys. when they make it well though and throw it on top of a pulled pork it's pretty good it creates like it, it. the acidity of it like breaks up with the like the sweetness or whatever of your barbecue sauce and the pork pretty well just saying even that even that i won't at how home, long I will you smoke it. how big is the turkey 18 pounds or so uh i want to say it's like 14 15 okay so it's, a little, it's smaller how long will you have to smoke that thing and how do you manage that with the temperature well because mine is an electric smoker you don't have to babysit it which is awesome no no no. but you have white meat and dark meat that that finish at different temperatures spatchcock it and you basically just go whatever whatever your uh so you flatten it out is that what you mean yep you say spatchcock it yeah okay. spatchcock it's a great excuse okay. to use a so i word. use i use when i do my turkey like that uh i use a tin foil triangle to protect the white meat so that it won't dry out yeah it's, it's i will say on my smoker i feel like it's interesting with poultry because you can overcook it and not lose its juice so i mean you do have to babysit oh, okay. it and ultimately oddly like that will cook the slowest at least at the last time i mean don't get me wrong i'll probably ruin it that's fine but i'm gonna have <laughs> you know i'll probably send a care package across the street to my parents but the reality is i'm gonna have 14 pounds of turkey with this barbecue sauce i'm making for yeah. four for four of us what makes it barbecue sauce it's just what it called it in the recipe that okay. i saw this okay. killer she's her name's at diva barbecue on instagram she's so good and her food looks amazing so if you want to check her out so you, can, you can go find it and you actually you have your you have your barbecue instagram account and i have my sourdough bread instagram accounts oh, i didn't know you said it. we should probably follow each other we'll take that off <laughs> all right everybody that's episode 44 of that range life have a good thanksgiving if that's what you yes celebrate. happy thanksgiving william yes you i'll see too. you on saturday man yeah i'm thankful for you i am I'm thankful for us i really am but that's the difference here um sorry that's mean <laughs> but i am i am you indeed. just totally dismissed my see why i'm never heartfelt you just dismissed my feelings. no it's the other way around just, i'm so used to it with you that it's like when you are i can't accept it <laughs> my wife's like in the other room going see chris this one this one fucking talking about <laughs> <laughs> he does the same shit with me i'm like i do i do i'm sorry i'm a horrible person <laughs> Anyway, I am thankful for you, and I'd look forward to seeing you and our nephew Josh on Saturday and uh, do this tour edge match. And I was pretty cocky about being able to beat you, but that said, I'm starting to get a little nervous. Hey, uh, next next episode, are we going to do any kind of gift guide or our favorite things or anything? Yeah, let's do that next episode, guys. We'll we'll gift guide. You, okay, tell you all the things we're going to buy ourselves that you should get for other people as gifts. Episode 45 will come will come with uh, some recommendations or things that you should eat by yourself because we love them. Exactly. All right, great. All right, happy episode 44. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.